going to be a busy year for the Gifts of Love Farm in Simsbury. This year, the farm has updated its incubator farm program, will introduce a veterans program, and will open its own farm stand to sell organic produce to the community. I'm Andrea Hobson, and with me today is Susan Pribison, Executive Director of the Gifts of Love Farm. This month, we're introducing a monthly segment on SCTV that will give our neighbors a front row seat on the programs and services that the Gifts of Love Farm provides to our community. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'm glad. First of all, give us a quick overview um, of the farm, where it is, your relationship with Gifts of Love. Okay. Uh, the Gifts of Love Farm is located, obviously, in Simsbury on 73 Wolcott Road. And it's a 77-acre certified organic farm. We have uh, lots of different programs out there and some new ones, which you already mentioned. And uh, the nice part is when we merged with the farm, it's because the missions were similar. And a lot of people don't know that. But the town was deeded the farm back in the late 1800s by Amos Eno for the purpose of feeding the poor. And back then, there were Connecticut poor farms, and if you couldn't take care of your family, you moved on to the farm, learned how to work the land so your family could eat. Poor farms? Yes. Wow. There's uh, very few left, and they say that uh, the Gifts of Love Farm is probably one of the ones in the best condition in the state. And it has a relationship to Gifts of Love and your mission. Yes, yes. Well, because they used to take care of the poor, um, what we do is we help people who are employed but are having a temporary, temporary financial crisis. And so what we do is we help them with a variety of services, but most of all what we try and provide them is a sense of hope that things can get better, that they can get back to sustainability. And how does the farm play into that? The farm with the organic produce, they bring, as part of the deed and part of our mission, they bring produce to Simsbury Social Services and they also bring it to our food pantry and some food pantries in Hartford. So recently I understand that the lease that Gifts of Love has on the farm has been expanded in concert with the town of Simsbury. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, that's, that's exciting. Um, we have a 15-year lease with the farm, and part of it is to provide education to the community. And so this year uh, we needed to make some changes. And so what we are going to be doing is reintroducing our incubator farmer program uh, where new farmers can come in and lease a small plot of land and they get to use our equipment and our walk-in refrigerator and they get education from the farmer. Um, to start a farm is a very big financial endeavor. So this allows them to start small and make sure that it's really what they want to do. Uh, new this year will be a veterans program where we will be working with one, possibly two different organizations and bringing the veterans out and teaching them how to farm. And they too will have a small plot of land so that what they grow they can bring back to their families. But veterans are mission driven. And so for a lot of them who might have some PTSD or some issues from having served, coming out there and working the land and being able to see their accomplishments is very rewarding to them. So some of the people in the veterans program may not have as their goal to become farmers. Right. It's just something that helps them. And um, even if they don't have a goal to become a farmer, um, they can go back and learn how to grow food for their family. They can do it on a smaller scale. So I'm intrigued um, about the incubator program, the farmer yes. incubator program. Tell me a little bit more about that one. OK. Um, and actually, our farmer, uh, Jim, he was in an incubator farmer program when it was a community farm of Simsbury. And he went on to farm at a different farm and then came back as our farm manager. But it's designed to teach skills to people who are new in the farming business. And it's actually, they form a nice little community. 
but they get lessons on how to work the equipment, how to use the equipment. Um, they get to use our storage areas and our walk-in refrigerator. And we also partner with Yukon that comes out and runs an education series that they get to benefit from that as well. So during the program, how long are they in the program? Uh, they're in there for the full farming season. They would start in March when we start our uh, seeds in the greenhouse. And they would be there until we put the farm to bed in late November, early wow. December. That's great. So one of the things that's intriguing is that this is organic produce. Yes. And up until now, members of the community haven't had access to it, but you have something new this year. Talk about that. Yes, we do. We're very excited about it. Um, for the first time, we are going to have community gardens. And uh, we have received a grant where we are going to make uh, raised beds and they can come and, for a very small fee, come and farm on those raised beds. And it's different because there, I know there's other community gardens and they have a small little organic, but this will be all organic and they will get help from the farmer if you don't know how to farm organically of what to do. So people will rent plots? Yes, yes. Wow, this is new this year? This is new this year. <laughs> so you mentioned the raised beds, why is that important? The raised beds is because the space that we have available is um, close to the wetlands. And so okay. if we raise the beds, then the, we, you can, there's only certain crops you can plant in the wetlands. So we will have organic soil in the raised beds for them to farm. Well, I have to admit, I don't farm. I don't want to farm. <laughs> but I understand that there's good news, too, about how I could get my organic vegetables from you. Yes, yes. Um, we are switching from a CSA to a farm stand model this year. And uh, we will grow probably um, narrower range um, because we want well-known vegetables that people are going to come out and buy, but the farm stand will be open one day a week in Simsbury and one day a week in Avon. So you're going to have... We're hoping to have two. Two farm stands. So talk a little bit about that farm well, stand. Well, it would be two different days. Okay. And okay. it would be open late afternoon into early evening uh, so that people can stop by on their way home from work. Um, oh, I like that. That's yeah. exactly what I want to buy my vegetable. I like that. So um, there's an interesting story behind the farm stand. Tell us about that. Well, the farm stand is being created by an Eagle Scout. And uh, we have had a longstanding relationship with the Scouts in this area. And we have a lot of structures that have been built through the Eagle Scout program out there. This is an individual This is Eagle? one individual Eagle Scout wow. who uh, actually a few weeks ago came and met with us with a 3D design of, of the impressive. farm stand. <laughs> it was very impressive. And um, so it's, it's pretty fancy. And uh, he is doing the whole project and raises the money. That's part of the project. He uh -huh. raises the money, puts it together, and then leaves it at our site. And it's going to be done in time for this year? When do you expect it, it to open? Done. We expect to open probably about mid-June, uh, mid, mid to late June, uh, when the vegetables would be primed. You also think of that farm as a place for educational offerings. Talk a little bit about that. Well, we've referred to the farm as an educational setting for the enhancement of the community. And so the education happens in a variety of ways. Um, certainly, uh, even the Eagle Scout project is a piece of education for that gentleman to, to learn sure. how to build. We have the incubator farmer program. We have uh, what we call days of caring, where large corporations, even small corporations, come out in groups of anywhere from six to 40 people. And they learn how to harvest the vegetables, how to plant vegetables, transplant, whatever. But they, they are learning. And we spend time teaching them about the education of the farm and encourage them to come back to events on the farm. We also have, as I mentioned before, UConn is coming back to run an education series for farmers or people who want to learn about whatever the topic is. We have, we'll have cooking classes going on, um, paint night, things like that, that the community, if they need an education space, we have an education classroom that also has a fully licensed commercial kitchen inside of it, and they can come and run programs there. 
So I understand that some of the chefs in the community are interested in using that, that kitchen. Talk a little bit yes, about that. Yes, we have for a few years now, we have farm to table dinners in the summer. Generally, we have about three of them. And uh, they plan a menu using as many of our vegetables as possible. And it's a great way to get people out to the farm to see it. A lot of times people don't even know where it is or doesn't know it exists. So it's a great way for them to come out, learn what we're doing, learn about our mission, learn about how Gifts of Love, our Avon offices, um, how it coordinates with the farm. But then also we do charge a fee. And when you buy a farm to table dinner, um, a meal, you get your four course meal with wine pairings and that money also feeds four additional families. So it's an important project. It's called the Gifts of Love Farm. Yes. So we would be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about what Gifts of Love is. Because I think there's a lot of people in the community that think they know what you do, right. but they don't. <laughs> they don't know the full extent. Right, right. Uh, Gifts of Love actually originated in Simsbury 30 years ago. Uh, a woman uh, noticed that there were some downsizing going on in the late 80s, and people were struggling. So she started collecting items in her garage. Really? And then would get volunteers, just like we do now, to help her deliver the items to the people in need. And a year later, they moved into a space and became incorporated. And our mission has not changed at all. It is still to help people who are employed but having temporary financial crisis to regain sustainability. And we do it through services and education. They Talk a little bit about some of the um, programs you have. Mm -hmm. They come to us uh, for one year, once a month, and a volunteer helps them shop. And when I say shop, there's no money exchange. There's no cost to the individual or their families. And they come in and they shop for clothes. We have a whole clothing area, gently used clothes from infants to whatever age. And from there, they take them to the housewares to shop for things that they might need, sheets, towels, small electronics, kitchen you know, dishes, things like that. Um, and from there they go to food. And uh, we have a food pantry that is one of only four in the state that participates in the SWAP program. SWAP stands for Supporting Wellness at Pantries, uh, designed by Katie Martin with FoodShare. And what it does is it uses a stoplight system to teach people that if it's a green one, it's low in sodium, salt, and sugar. If it's yellow, it's a little bit higher, and red means it's probably not healthy for you. But what we have learned is that when you first come, you're searching for comfort foods, and they're usually red. Interesting. So <laughs> we say we're not the food police, but we gently coach them that how if you learn to eat healthier, it can reduce the illness in your family. And the number one reason that people file bankruptcy in the state of Connecticut is due to health problems that they were either underinsured or not insured for. Interesting. So uh, I read about the backpack program. Talk a little bit about that. The backpack program is probably our most popular program. It, is, um, it was started 12 years ago when the former executive director daughter were at middle school in Avon and they came home and said these two girls talked about how they hadn't eaten all weekend and so she immediately put some food together and brought it to these families fast forward we are now in throughout Farmington Valley West Hartford and New Britain and we provide over 300 backpacks every single week we have an amazing group of volunteers that come in and put it together like an assembly line but they are identified through the school as not having enough food for the weekend. And so we send home a backpack for the whole family, not just the individuals. Okay. Easy to prepare meals in case there isn't a parent around to help them cook. Uh, breakfast, snacks, beverages. Um, it's generally 10 to 12 pounds of food that we send out to over 300 children every week. And these are children as a rule that would get subsidized breakfast and lunch at school, hence the reason that the weekends are an issue. Yes, yes. And there's sadly, there's a lot of research that has recently come out about the, it's 68 hours generally from when you leave school and come back on Monday. And um, for children that are under the age of 10, it can cause irreversible brain damage wow. from going hungry for those 68 hours. 
So it's very important that we especially reach the young ones, but we service from uh, grade one through high school. Now, we had an interesting conversation about the clothes, about what you accept and w how you choose, and I thought that was very interesting. Well, they're working families, and we want to treat them with respect, and we want them to feel respected when they're there. So the clothes that we issue are in good condition, if not great condition. We don't accept clothing with any stains or tears or that looked worn um, because they have pride and we want them to have pride so we want them to look nice and unfortunately that's not always what's dropped off but we work with another charity um, a national charity who comes and picks up the clothes that we can't use excellent so it sounds like there's a lot going on and one of the things that people may be interested in um, along with the farm to table, because right. I know everybody, those sell out, um, is, is the community gardens. So yes. what if uh, they're not like me and they do want a farm? <laughs> Talk about that. Well, we will, we will be announcing something when we're ready to have people sign up. But they, they would sign up with us. And um, Can people get on a list now? Hoping, well, that's not a bad idea. We're hoping, actually, we're not going to mandate it, but it would be nice if it was a family project so that children could come out oh, and like learn that. about yep. farming as well and see how it goes from the seed and ends up on their plate. And um, so it's actually another education opportunity. Excellent. Well, it sounds like there's been a lot of changes and a lot of things are moving forward, and it's a very exciting time. Yep. I know one of the most popular things that you do, and you bring, it brings people out to the farm or the farm to table, Right. Dinners. Talk a little bit about that. Okay. Um, farm to table dinners are a lot of fun. We partner with a restaurant and um, usually a local restaurant that's interested in pairing their food with our organic vegetables. And so when you arrive, uh, you're greeted with a uh, arrival cocktail, and then there's usually hors d'oeuvres, and each course is paired with wine that's often donated from a local wine store. And between each course, uh, the chef will come out and tell you what he cooked and why he paired it with that vegetable and how it enhances the meal. Oh, I love that. And then the um, person from the wine store will talk about why he paired that particular wine with that meal. So, so you get it's, smarter as well as, yes, you, as, well as eating well. Right, and, and, and the food is amazing, and there's a lot of food, and people just rave about having a great time out there. It's um, under a pavilion that was donated, and we take away the picnic tables, and it's white tablecloths and nice napkins, and it's just a beautiful atmosphere where you're surrounded by a farm. So you're eating well, and you're also benefiting gifts of love. Yes, you're helping four other families to eat. That's fabulous, and I assume yes. these things sell out pretty quickly. Yes, they do. <laughs> Excellent, and you'll be announcing when those are soon? Yes, yes we, we will. We'll all we, be waiting. We will announce it in March, and generally we can seat about 63 people. Excellent, oh, put me down, please. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so thanks, Susan. It sounds like you've got a busy year ahead of you. I wanna thank you for joining us today. Tune in next month when we'll be learning about the Gifts of Love Incubator Farm Program. And if you have any questions about the farm, Gifts of Love, their educational programs. You can find them on the web at giftsoflovect.org. Thank you for joining us. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.